Hello, everyone. I'm a technical director and a software architect of Netint, responsible for uh, Netint's uh, software development. Uh, I would like to thank Stream Media Collect for this opportunity to talk about Netint's ASIC solution for high density video encoding in the cloud. So let me start the sharing. Okay. So um, first, let me take a few seconds to introduce uh, Latint. Latint is a small but also a global company. We have uh, R&D offices in Vancouver, Toronto, and Shanghai. We provide ASIC-based hyperscale video solutions. We design our own SOC and then build our solutions on top of the chips that we design. Latint products have been used by quite a few tier one hyperscalers. Okay, let me get started. Um, video streaming, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> video streaming dominates internet usage. <coughs> the legacy of internet video was video on demand. Uh, mobile social video and live streaming have been expanding for quite a few years. Interactive uh, video streaming, including cloud gaming, cloud desktop, and the AR VR applications like 360 video live streaming for sp sports and uh, events have started to grow rapidly in recent years. Uh, video encoding capability is critical to all these applications. Uh, VOD lead pre-encoding before distribution. Live streaming and interactive video needs real-time encoding. Large amount of this video content requires scalable, high density, energy efficient and low cost video encoding solutions. Highly interactive applications like cloud gaming, cloud, cloud virtual desktop, and AR VR demands ultra low latency encoding. And video resolution is becoming ever higher towards 4K and 8K. So especially when AR and VR looming in the horizon. And the video encoding is migrating from 18-year-old AVC towards newer standards such as HVC and AV1. The migration from AVC to HVC is accelerating. Overall, HVC and AV1 is much more efficient in coding high-resolution pictures from 720p to uh, 8K. HVC is known to bring about 40% bandwidth reduction compared with AVC when you're encoding this high resolution contents. In the past, the migration from AVC to HVC had been very slow because of HVC patent related concerns. Nowadays, however, we're seeing the acceleration of transition from AVC to HVC. Netflix, uh, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, and many more are adopters of HVC. Actually, all new cell phones support hardware accelerated HVC decoding and therefore get rid of the battery and heat issues that are involved with software HVC decoding. AV1 support is also expanding very uh, quickly. What this means is that cloud and edge data centers need to ramp up their HVC and AV1 encoding capability. Software encoding just cannot cope with this uh, exponential growth. Um, here is an example of the uh, CPU encoding speed test we did recently. Uh, this test is done with Intel Xeon Gold uh, 6230 CPU running at 2.10 gigahertz. You can see from the table that with a relatively simple 1080p 30 video sequence, blue sky, it leads uh, to reach X264 faster preset. X264, um, uh, by the way, we use the X264, 265, uh, the open source software encoders. So for X264 faster preset, it needs 3.3 .3 CPU cores. To reach X265 medium preset uh, using a GVC encoding, it needs 8.23 CPU cores. For uh, a higher bit rate, a higher frame rate, and the more complex content, it needs even more cores. So, encoding 
uh, such a server, very expensive server, equipped with two Xeon Gold CPUs, 40 cores in total, may only be able to handle four to five HEVC 1080p 30 encoding with X265 medium preset. With more complicated content, it might only be able to ha handle like one 1080p 60 streams. With the Intel SVT technology, the performance may be able to double and achieve eight 1080p 30 streams per server. However, each generation of Liu codec may bring about 10 times more complexity. In terms, terms of cost of computation, um, HEVC is four to 10 times more expensive than AVC. AV1 is maybe four to 10 times more than HEVC. Software encoding just cannot handle this explosion of computational complexity. And it is also very difficult for software encoder to cope with the requirements like 4K, 8K, real-time encoding, or ultra low latency encoding. Software encoding capability varies a lot uh, with the content and it's difficult to maintain consistent latency. So here is a chart on the technology alternatives for video encoding. At the bottom left, uh, I put the pure software encoding X265 running on CPU. It is the lowest density and the capacity. It's huge resource requirements pose limitation to scalability, very high on operational expense. New bit better is that Intel SVT um, is basically still a software encoder with optimization using Intel's uh, special instruction sets. It uh, improved the density, uh, but it has limited quality and performs trade-off uh, customizations. Is less flexible. Um, we have then uh, GPU solutions. Uh, these days, you will find that the GPU also have hardened encoder cores inside the GPU. And then it uh, depends on what types of GPU are using. It might have some uh, shaded cores that help with the encoding. It has improved density and capacity, but the form factor usually is cause is huge. So the form factors can be a uh, obstacle for you to achieve high density. Power consumption is also a big problem for scanning. It can be very expensive. And then you have FPGA solutions also. Uh, this this uh, FPGA used to be like you use the software, software, uh, software course, IP course. These days you will find that the FPGAs actually have hardened encoder course inside as well. So basically you'll find the GPU FPJ is they are taking the ASIC approach in terms of encoding already. Uh, it's just that the LPJ, it has a hardened core with some program, programmable, programmable logic. And uh, it improved the density and the capacity with higher power uh, efficiency. Uh, again, uh, you need to uh, be able to put this uh, big chip into a particular good form factor so that it can fit into the server. It can be expensive as well. Uh, Nothing that believes uh, ASIC solution, pure ASIC solution is the answer to this uh, growth, uh, exponential growth of video encoding demand. It provides the highest density at the lowest cost. It provides the deterministic ultra low latency, regardless of codec and content. It has um, power efficiency. Uh, we Nothing solution actually provides a unique UDOR2 uh, form factor. It can be actually fit into uh, the existing cloud storage buildouts. It is very easy actually for, with NetInst solution to switch from existing software solution to ASIC solution. So the ASIC based high scale encoding actually is already being mass deployed. Uh, you may already know that uh, almost 100% of YouTube video are transcoded using ASIC encoder, like the Google's Argo system. It's powered by a chip designed by Google. Latent uh, Codensity G4, however, is the world's first commercially available ASIC solution for high density video encoding. And the Latent cards have been deployed by hyperscalers to serve up to 100 million users a month. Uh, that means T48 cards uh, shown here on the right side, uh, top on right side, is a UDOR2 
transcoder module. Uh, it offers high performance and low power draw for cloud and edge deployments. It can do 4K60 encoding with just one uh, of this module. It contains one of the G, uh, G4 chips that we designed. We also have another form factor is a uh, half height, half length AIC, PCIe AIC car. It contains four of these chips, provides four times the capacity. Basically it's a four by 4K60 encoding capability within this one car. NetInt's products can be fit into almost any of these commercially available AMD, uh, Intel, and uh, ARM servers. This is an example of uh, uh, Intel server uh, of Dell, Dell R640. It's one RU server. Um, it can fit 10 of these T48 U.2 cards. It provides 40 live broadcast quality uh, encoding letters. When I'm talking about encoding letters, I'm talking about 1080p plus 720p plus 480p, et cetera, a ladder of encoding streams. Okay, here is comparison between the software encoding and that is the ASIC encoding. Um, here I'm comparing it against Intel's SVT technology. With Intel SVT, each software encoding server can do like eight streams of HEVC 1080p30 encoding with X265 medium quality. For encoding 1000 HEVC 1080p30 streams with X265 medium preset quality, 125 software encoding servers are needed. Assuming $11,000 per server, the cap expense for software encoding is $1.4 million. With the Latin's A6 solution, only 12.5 servers are needed, which is about $230,000 for cap CapEx. Uh, power consumption wise, each Latin T48 card consumes seven watts of power. And taking the whole server into consideration, software encoding server each consume 465 watts of power, and that is 58 watts per stream. ASIC encoding, however, consume uh, per server consumes 250 watts of power, and that is three watts per stream. Here is a comparison between GPU encoding and that into ASIC encoding. So one RU server equipped with four net, uh, NVIDIA T4 GPUs can do 40, 1080p, 30 HEVC low latency streams i.e. Uh, low B frames with X265 medium preset quality. To encode 1,000 1, streams, 25 such, server, such servers are needed. And the each GPU encoding server consumes 440 watts of power. That is 11 watts per stream, as opposed to three watts per stream for AC. A T4H, uh, a HEVC capability, encoding capability actually sh shrinks a lot by probably one to uh, one over 2.5 times when encoding video with B frames. So with normal latency encoding, six 2.5 servers are needed actually, and each stream needs 27.5 watts. So this slide um, summarizes the comparison of Latin uh, T48 versus GPU versus software. Uh, TCO-wise, ASIC solution is one-tenth of software, one-half to one-fifth of GPU. Power-wise, ASIC solution is one-twentieth of software, one-quarter to one-tenth of GPU. Density-wise, ASIC solution is 10 times of software, two to five times of GPU. So when we design an ASIC solution, we need to consider how to make sure it can easily be integrated into existing workflow. As FMPEG is literally used by almost everyone for video codec and video filtering, that in the provides FMPEG plugin for uh, video codec and filtering. 
the we have uh, FMPEG VVV codec uh, plugins for AVC, HVC, AVRN encoder, decoder, and the various FMPEG VVV filter plugins for video 2D operations like scanning, overlay, and cropping and padding. Um, with uh, that in uh, FMPEG, uh, we'll prep. FM plugins for AI uh, inference as well. Uh, this will include the region of interest detection and background replacement, etc. cetera. Uh, that in software stack include a fully uh, open uh, sourced user library, which user can change and uh, recompile for their own system. And this further maximizes the interoperability and the use of integration. That means the user library communicates with firmware through a standard NVMe driver, which is embedded uh, in most operating systems. So low driver installation is needed. Uh, that means uh, cars support Linux, Windows, and Android systems because those systems have embedded uh, NVMe drivers. NetInt actually has a G5 uh, solution and de development. The G5 cars will be ready for deployment next year. Uh, G5 chip targeted to quadruple the encoding capability of NetInt Gen 4. So it's going to provide 8K60 encoding capability just in one chip. So it's 8K60 or 4K60 was 32 1080p30 live encoding within one single chip. It also adds the AV1 encoder on top of HVC and AVC. It adds a 2D engine that can do scanning and overlay uh, those 2D graphics operations. It also adds an AI engine to support AI-assisted encoding, uh, such as um, you know, a region of interest encoding, um, Content adaptive rate control, etc., or like uh, in this kind of a uh, event, we do a background replacement. Uh, or in the broadcasting industry, you could identify a region of interest, uh, the uh, 2K or 4K region of interest outside for 8K camera, and then do 1080p and 4K streaming, um, automatic tracing a player or uh, a figure in the uh, uh, in the events. So as NetInt's uh, uh, solution uh, adopts NVMe as the host to device uh, interface, this enables us to take advantage of NVMe of Fabrics technology to scale up hardware accelerators capacity outside of servers. Here is an example where you have a bunch of computer loads uh, uh, sharing two uh, uh, servers that's break up with uh, this codec cars. So the computer loads connect with the hardware accelerators through internet or fiber channels. All the hardware accelerators are shared among all the computer nodes or servers, although physically they're outside of computer server. This allows us to grow this uh, encoding capability outside of server and adapt to different encoding these inside different servers at a different time and for different applications. So one typical use case uh, of Latin cars is for uh, encoding uh, for cloud mobile gaming on the ARM servers. So ARM server can be combined with GPU and high density Latin encoders to provide a high performance economical platform for cloud mobile gaming. So there are some benefits for using NetInt encoders instead of the GPU encoders. Uh, so GPU encoder, the capability, the quality, and the API varies. So using an ASIC-based encoder ensures the solution is not bound to one type of GPU. And for cloud mobile gaming, typically you might be able to render 40 or 
even 50 games inside one GPU, your GPU capability typically won't be able to cope with that, especially for HEVC. And using an uh, outside encoder uh, ensures that the encoding does not impact the GPU uh, rendering capability. Uh, this is important, but some GP depends on GPU brands. Some GPU actually um, use a lot of uh, shader cores to help with encoding. So if you do a full-blown encoding, it will actually impact the GPU rendering capability. So Latent encoder also provides higher quality uh, and the density for HEVC and support AV1 for, uh, for, uh, on the G5 chip is coming soon. These are other uh, use cases. And uh, so cloud desktop, uh, cloud virtual uh, mobile phone, um, and real-time uh, encoding data generation for UGC uh, video, uh, live uh, 360 video encoding. Uh, we actually have customers using that with our Gen 4, but Gen 5 is even better. And uh, we can use video surveillance because of AI on the um, Gen 5 chip. We also have very great uh, video conferencing uh, community where you can do a 30 party participants uh, video conferencing, uh, including coding, uh, decoding, scaling, overlay, encoding, all on the same chip. Okay, so that wraps up my uh, presentation.